Hey guys, I'm Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. So, have you ever heard of Project X-Ray? Well, if you haven't, you're about to be enlightened. It was a project so important in World War II that it was even approved by the president personally. So let's get some context to this bad Jackson, shall we? So imagine it's World War II. I mean, no one really wants to be a part of that, but just imagine, you know. Unless you're like really pro-American. World War II really wasn't that fun of a time. I digress. So after Germany forfeited, it was pretty much just the United States and Japan having a little tussle for the Pacific. And little did Japan know, we were come for them. We were island hopping around, which is a term that's used when you are taking one island at a time. So eventually we got pretty darn close to the mainland of Japan. But we came to the conclusion that going actually on the island itself with an army would probably be detrimental to both sides. Though yeah, we probably could overpower them in the end. The Japanese would be really hard to take down. The United States felt that we needed another way in order to get Japan to surrender, pretty much unconditionally. So what did we do? We came up with Project X-Ray. And no, it doesn't involve dropping tons of giant X-rays on people. Though that probably would be effective, we came up with the idea to drop a giant, overwhelming, powerful surprise that would make the Japanese speechless. And what do you think that was? And not the atomic bomb. <laughs> Actually, it was to release millions of little bats with explosives into Japanese cities. Yeah. So, how did this idea come to be? Wow! Let's head over to New Mexico. A man of the name Dr. Adams, which for some reason I can only think of the Adams family when I hear that, even though I don't think anybody in the show had that name. He was also a dentist and loved to dabble in, in little inventions and stuff. He took a vacation on December 7th, 1941, into the great state of New Mexico, and while he was there, he saw millions of bats. And I don't know about you, but I would definitely not go on vacation just to see millions of bats. I'd rather go to, like, Hawaii or Florida and sit in the sun. Not be outside with thousands of bats pooping all over the place. Pooping. Everywhere. Guano. He somehow came up with this neurotic idea that strapping tiny little bombs on millions of bats would be a very great way to scare the Japanese. So what did he do? He proposed this idea to the government. And what did the government do? They loved it. Roosevelt personally endorsed it, and the Air Force supported it. Mr. Adams, American innovator. Yeah. So the project was picked up, and it was supported. So what the government did is they made two teams. One team that studied bats, and one team that studied bombs. I mean, the project was so highly regarded that they had Louis Pfizer, the inventor of napalm, on board. Crap just got real. Now the bat species they approved was called the Mexican Freetail Bat. Due to the fact that there are several millions of these bats, they could carry almost twice their weight, since these bats would actually fly with their offspring holding onto them. They hibernated so they could keep them at bay until they got to where they needed to go. And they flew at night, so who the heck would know that bats are everywhere? Well then again, who wouldn't know if a million bats just started swarming into your city? Guano. Guano everywhere. So the first time they actually tried this out is they had a little base and they made a tiny little town and they released bats. And it was a complete failure. They couldn't actually get the bombs to explode at the right time, so nobody wanted to fly a plane around with bats that's with bombs strapped to them if there was nothing that kept that bomb from going off immediately. Something that the explosive team of this had to work on quite a lot. So they had to invent the safety pin, which for some reason was taking quite a while. But because there was no high-ranking military officials there, the project was not immediately called off. But in the city Carlsbad, New Mexico, because there's large populations of bats, and they actually told the military people that we're gonna have dummy bombs on them this time, they managed to luck out also with some high-ranking military officials there. When they showed it, it was a perfect example of what's gonna happen. When they released the bats, they found them all over the place. Not only in the specific little fake Japanese town that they made, but even in farmhouses way far away. Now what the bombs were meant to do is actually cause little fires. They weren't meant to destroy a whole city, but meant to cause so much fire everywhere without people really knowing it because they would be in attics and they would be under roofs and they'd be everywhere. There would be so much fire that no one would be able to put it out, completely destroying every part of the city and even some parts of the rural area. Because even if they went into the forest and they catch the forest on fire, there's gonna be fire everywhere which is highly stress-inducing. The military was quite impressed with the show, but sadly, it was still taking a long time to finalize this type of project. Two million dollars were already invested into it, and they still said that they were gonna have to wait until late 1945 
to finalize this type of technology. So the military also had the other top secret project, the Manhattan Project, and it was much more efficient at doing its job, as well as being a quicker way to ending the war, which they wanted. Because saving American lives was the ultimate goal. So the man of the name Ernest King, a man who died in my home state, and a hero to all bat lovers, decided to call the project off because it was getting nowhere. Because the bats were seasonal, they could only attack during the winter when the bats were hibernating. They were also not able to predict the way the bats would fly, their attitudes and everything. So so many factors were playing against it. Where the Manhattan Project had a bomb that could be dropped whenever, however, and it was much more destructive. So you know America, the bigger the better. Yeah. So the project was officially called off on February 6th, 1944. It's sad though I had to come to this, being that there were a lot of people that were extremely negatively affected by this. But war is war. And the best thing we can do as an intelligent species is to try to prevent something like that ever happening again. And trying to prevent our governments from being the first ones to pull the trigger. I'm not saying what America did in Nagasaki and Hiroshima is in any way acceptable. But it did end the war and probably saved more lives than it did take away. Ah, that got depressing fast. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed learning something new. <laughs> if you have if you have an interesting animal that you think strapping a bomb to would be effective in the way the bats were, um, do tell what that animal might be. Oh boy. <laughs> I think strapping bombs to kittens would be highly effective. But <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, please support the Factoid channel. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make and I really like making these for you guys. More Q10s on the way, and more just fun fact videos. Sorry it's taking me a while to post stuff, I am quite busy with college right now. But now that I've got everything caught up, I can now dedicate more time to YouTube. So please support my channel, and never stop learning. This is The Factoid, and thanks for watching.